let's start 107 tomorrow. Philly and Atlanta in Atlanta. I don't see announced starters. The only two guys that I see announced are, are Verlander for Houston, Garrett Cole for New York. Um, Peter, you said Quantrill for Cleveland? Is that like cut and dry announced? I mean, you would assume so, unless you want to go Bieber on short rest. But I'm guessing it will be they Quantrill win. versus Cole. Yeah, so it's and it's not going to be McKenzie either. And I'm sure it won't be Savali. So I'm going to guess that it will be Cal Quantrill going in game one. Padres Dodgers, you're assuming it's going to be Arias, and you're assuming it's going to be either Clevenger or Darvish? I bet it's Clevenger. It Ugh. probably will be Clevenger, which will be a very tough one for the Padres to win. Phillies Braves, you're going to assume it's going to be Ranger, Ranger Suarez, Suarez and against Max, Max Freed, which is phenomenal. And then in then it's probably going to be Logan Gilbert versus Justin Verlander. Yeah. So Another we'll, we'll start with We'll start with Philly and Atlanta um, with no like confirmed probable pitchers at this point. I don't want to necessarily get into like the game one intricacies. Do we want to, do we want to just do the series? I think we do the series. It's, it's because predicting game one, it's important, but it's not as important as a three game series. Cause you, like we saw like, you win game one, you're winning the series. I don't think any team won game one then went on to lose the series. Like the Padres, won game one, won the series. Guardians, won game one, won the series. Philly, won game one, won the series. What other series do we have? Mariners. I mean, the Mets, the, the Mets lost, lost oh, game yeah, one. Oh, yeah, that's what I said. The, the Padres won game one and yeah. won the series. Every single team that won game one won the series. So let's talk the whole series. Okay. Um, Philly, Atlanta, it's a best of five. First to three wins, wins. Um, how are we feeling here? Because it'll be Freed, it'll be Kyle Wright, it'll be Charlie Morton, and uh, it's going to be a really interesting roster decision uh, at some point, either today or early tomorrow, to see if Strider is on this postseason roster. I got to say, I think the Phillies are going to give them work. I think the Braves win in five. I, I think it's a battle. And I think the only reason that the Phillies might not upset the Braves is just because they got a little bit of use already. The Braves are coming in as fresh. But remember, I mean, this gap of time, I don't think helps these teams much. Like this gap of not playing, you get you get fully rested, which is great. But the, the Phillies are feeling that momentum. And that is so important going into a series like this where I, the Phillies, I bet if you ask them, they don't feel like underdogs here. I think the Phillies are going to give a, the Braves a run for their money, especially if Strider is not 100%. Especially. I think the Braves win, but I would not be surprised by an upset here. I think Philly is feeling it right now. If Wheeler and Nola are that good, they can beat anybody. They should feel like underdogs. And, and <laughs> because I say that, um, you know, I – Yes, I think time off hurts the Braves' offense. I think that the Braves' offense is good enough to overcome that time off. I think it is the best thing to happen to a pitching rotation and a pitching staff as a whole at this point in the season. I mean, we talk about Hayter having six days of rest and he comes out throwing 100. This is probably the freshest that Max Fried's arm has felt since April. Yeah. More time for Strider to heal. Uh, Morton, I think Chuck Morton will take the time. Uh, pitching wise, they're going to be they're going to be a problem. Uh, I think the Braves are going to be really, 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 really tough. So, what what are you holding a four up for? I say four. I say Atlanta and four. Oh, and four. I was like, am I missing something? Uh, yeah, yeah I, I think Atlanta. I think Atlanta takes care of it in four. I, I think they they steal one of Nola or Wheeler starts when whenever that stacks up here, but. I think Atlanta controls the series. Atlanta, the ball that they were playing down the stretch too was just just ridiculous. They took care of the Phillies all year long. Um, I just I'm worried about the drop off, like a Ranger Suarez. I know he's been good this year, but I, I just don't Ranger I don't trust Suarez, him. Yeah, yeah I don't try. I don't trust him. I, I, the bullpen has stepped up this year, and especially down the stretch. I, I just see this as one of those spots where it just it kind of runs out a little bit and it, the, the Braves are just so much better. Um, I, I think the Phillies steal one though. I do. I do. I think they, they steal one of those two games and that's about it. I got to say, I have the same feeling that I had with Padres over Mets with this one. I think the Phillies are going to give them work. I think the Philly, like how impressive it was to go into Bush stadium and beat the Cardinals. I was, I was floored. Like, I was, I was genuinely 
not shocked because I knew the Phillies were good, but just they dominated the Cardinals. They did. I know that they came back in the end, but they 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 really impressed me. I think if the bullpen can hold up, Sir Anthony Dominguez looked good, David Robertson looked good, Jose Alvarado looked good, and when you have Nola and Wheeler at the top of their game, Wheeler looks like one of the best pitchers in baseball. Nola looks like one of the best pitchers in baseball. I would give the Phillies the starting pitching edge in this. I would. I would give the Phillies the starting pitching edge. Like I think Wheeler, Nola, and Suarez are a as good, if not better, of a combination than a little bit of an injured Strider, Max Freed, and Kyle Wright. I think, I think that's if, as I think good. if Strider's pitching, you got to assume he's a, he's he's good to go. Just yeah. like Shane But McClanahan. is he going six? Like, I know Nola and Wheeler can go McClanahan six. McClanahan went six. And then I mean, the offense, you have the momentum that the Phillies have, and you have a little bit of rest that the Braves have. I think this is going to be close. How much have, How much I've, offensive momentum do they have? They, it was a late-game comeback and a bullpen implosion where four guys got beamed, and then they scored two runs yeah. the next game. And how much offensive momentum does this team really have? I but I, we were I, just I, saying how great Michael is pitched, and then how good the Cardinals bullpen is, and like they they beat them, they uh, beat them. But, but didn't we agree that the Cardinals beat themselves? Yeah, it's what we just said. Uh, they imploded game one. They should have lost that one, and then the Phillies scored two runs in game two. Like it was a great series win for the Phillies, but I, I don't think it was this like you know, offensive onslaught where you're seeing this momentum no. and, and this team that's just like humming as they come in. The, I, I don't know if I see it that way. Philly's offensive momentum and San Diego's offensive momentum are two totally different. Things. I agree. Yeah, I think the, I think the Padres have a lot more offensive momentum going here. And if we're talking pitching, man, if Spencer Strider's on that mound, I, I'm I'm betting on him. Max yeah. Freed has is, is been phenomenal. And then the rest of the starters that they have, I think it just it puts them over the top. I'll take a Chuck Morton over a Ranger Suarez in this spot any day of the week. I really so would. My thought is how it lines up. I think we're going to get Suarez and Freed. I go Freed. I go Atlanta. And then I think game two, I think we're going to get Wheeler on short, west, short rest against Kyle Wright. I'll go with Kyle Wright. I'll game go with Wheeler. Three, yeah, I'll go, you know, with Wheeler Morton, I'll go with Wheeler in that one. It'll be Morton and Nola. I go Nola over Morton. And then game four, I think that's when Atlanta puts it away. That's my thought on Atlanta in four. Yeah, my thought on Atlanta in five, I think the Phillies can go up 2-1. I think the Phillies yeah. could easily go up 2-1 I, here. I, I think that is feasible. I, I, the way that the pitching matchups line up, it does work in the Phillies' favor. If that's how it does end up going, it's going to be all – I think it really the big X factor here is the bullpen for the Phillies, right? Absolutely. Can they hold it down? Can they hold it down because – you, you, you couldn't you just imagine Peter where we have one of those situations where you know Wheeler gives you six strong yeah and you know yes. the Braves Braves pitching holds up pretty well too they're down two zero or whatever it is and then the bullpen just gives it all up right that's the big question but I, I can see where Peter's coming from with the way that these games line up that they could catch them just right with the two pitching matchups and try to ride that to success uh but again yeah it's going to be on the bullpen and I gotta you, you trust this bullpen Peter I got to say, guys, I took Padres plus 150 to beat the Mets. I think I'm going to be taking Phillies plus 180 hey, on the series. Money price. where his mouth is. I, I think I will I because it. I think the way that these pitching matchups line up, if the Phillies bullpen can at least compete with the way it lines up, if Strider is not 100% and the Braves just get caught lacking a little bit and the Phillies go up 2 1. All they need to do is win one more of those games. They need to go one of two to win the series. I don't think it's out of line. I think that momentum was built enough to your credit. If we're comparing Phillies to Padres, the Padres offense has more momentum than the Phillies. That's not what I was saying. I'm just saying the momentum that the Phillies built up compared to the Braves on a rest day. And they're about to get bombarded by some of the best pitching performances from the starting rotation that I've seen in the playoffs. I think the Phillies have an excellent shot here to upset the Braves. That's why I have the Braves in five, but I am not confident in it. And more likely than not, I will be on Phillies plus 180. Check out not gambling advice because the series prices um, will be available on Tuesday right before they come out. Actually, it's going to be on the Monday episode. So I will, they'll be, they're out or they'll be out in a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, as we were talking, it, it confirmed Ranger Suarez and Max Fried for game one. Uh, Cal Quantrill confirmed for game one for Cleveland. That's so electric. Um, let, let's jump now to the 337 first pitch tomorrow. Verlander against TBD. We assume Logan Gilbert and Seattle and Houston in Houston. I like Houston, I think in five. This is going to be tough, man. Yeah. I was thinking Houston in four, but the, the more I think about how this could line up and what magic Seattle has right now, 
I'll say I'll say Houston in five. I'm going to say Houston in five too. I think it's going to be tough, but I just when you look at the Astros rotation and bullpen, will we get the same production from the bottom of the lineup against these Astros when Astros have home field advantage too? Like I am more scared of the Astros at home than I am the Braves at home. But the Braves playing it true, so that's a tough one, too. These are all just great series. Um, I think the way that it lines up, the Astros, I'm more confident in the Astros here. Again, it's not like I'm going to lay it on the Astros series price. It's just the value isn't there. But this is an interesting one again. I, I like the Phillies to upset the Braves more than I like the Mariners to upset the Astros, but I ain't counting the Mariners out either arm. I, I agree. I, I do like the Phillies to upset the Braves more than I, I like the Mariners to upset the which, which I hate saying just because, again, it's the way the pitching matchups line up. I, I hope that the Mariners can find a way to pull this off. But I am I think the Astros are one of the best teams uh, we've seen in some time. I think this Dodgers and Astros team, I think each of them would have been the best team in baseball over the last like eight to 10 years, like each individual season. I, I'm, I'm forward at how good these teams are top to bottom. One thing I do want to say, though, is it's going to be tough to win in Seattle. And we're going to have two yep. games in Seattle. We'll have at least one. I want to shout out Seattle Mariners fans who have really embraced uh, this this postseason appearance after snapping the drought. You look at the uh, the bottom price for tickets. Uh, tickets as low as thirty five dollars in Houston for Game One, as low as forty dollars in Houston for Game Two. Guess what the get in the door price is on Saturday in Seattle? I don't know if you guys saw it. If you saw it, obviously one of you don't answer it. But did either of you see it? I didn't no. see it. Get in the door price. Just look for the shittiest seat. Shittiest seat in Houston, thirty five dollars. One hundred and ten bucks. Ninety. Two hundred and ninety six dollars to get in the door Good in Seattle game shit. game one of or game three, but the, the first home game. It's been twenty years. That's what I love to see right here. Right, this is uh, they probably know that they're 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 doomed in some ways, but they're guess what? They're out. showing up and they're enjoying it. I know it, you can't compare it to a team that had a twenty year playoff drought. But before I would get into any baseball analysis, I just wanted to shout that out because that's so fucking awesome. That to is see. awesome. And don't forget, Seattle is a rich person town. Like the the, the poverty line in San Francisco is like over a hundred thousand dollars seattle's not too far behind i think the poverty line's at like 80 or ninety thousand dollars. is it it's really startup people yeah so they can afford 290 to get in the door don't don't get it twisted yeah but no, i uh, love to see that no, absolutely I mean, love to see that th that watch party at t-mobile park was was great to see and yeah man i think it's going to be a crazy environment and, and good for seattle mariners fans good for the city of seattle to get playoff baseball back because that is going to be a must-see environment a hundred percent. And I will say though, if there's they might one thing upset I'm... the Astros, <laughs> when I think about it, they might, if, they, they, if yeah. they can steal game one or two, I, here's the problem. Are you beating Verlander in game one? Like rationally speaking? No, but it's baseball. Who knows? Um, it, who do we say would be going game two for, for the Astros? Bramber. Bramber. Most likely. That's so tough. That's so tough. Yeah. So that let's assume so they drop tough. the first two. They it's win over. game three in Seattle. Javier. Game four. Yeah, against Javier. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yes, they I are know. So and then game four, you got McCullers or yeah. Luis Garcia. Ooh. Pick your voice. And they've got Hunter Brown just waiting. I can't emphasize. I literally and I really a rested pen. But I think the offense for the Astros could get run up a little bit. Like if I'm talking about the Braves, like this rest, I think really matters because it's not the one game playoff and you have like two days of rest. I mean, there was this is a, almost a week now of not playing baseball, and that that will hurt them. Like, I think game one is probably going to be pretty low scoring. But again, it's how electric the Houston Astros bullpen has been. Presley and Stanek in the back end. Like we're talking best bullpens in baseball. They got it on top of those starters. So it's like the Mariners, what are they best at? That's why we were also confident in Guardians versus Rays. It was what are the Rays good at? Well, the Guardians are just as good in those categories. What are the Mariners built on? Starting pitching and bullpen. But the Astros might have a better rotation and a better bullpen. And it's just who's going to hit. They and do. I would lean the Astros. What? They do have a better start. Yeah, they do. They do. Bullpen. They do. Which, well, maybe not bullpen. I don't know. They might. They By the numbers, they do. It's, it's crazy. Um, it's, here, my thought here is, you know, game one, you say it's going to be low scoring. Is that because the Astros have had more time off or because it's fucking Justin Verlander against Logan? Both. Hill? I think, yeah, I think it's pretty, yeah. yeah. Right? It's both. You have time off and, you know, Verlander's up there. You're like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll get one or two here and that, that should do it. You know, I, I, I think it's really going to be one of those situations here where I, you, you could say, oh, yeah, Seattle's offense has to come through. 
I, I think that's a tall task, right? I think it's really on, they got to match them in the pitching department. And I, I think that there's a world where they can, right? I mean, if, if they're going to need, as I think the best way we can put it is you watch a March Madness game, right? And you see the big upsets. How do those upsets happen? Usually it's because the, the underdog team just doesn't miss a shot, right? They're just, it's, they, they have that magic and they don't miss a shot. I, I look at the Mariners. I think they're going to get their opportunistic runs. They seem to always do that. The, the, the way that they win the series is that every starter goes out there and shoves. And, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but it, it isn't that far fetched to see Luis Castillo go out there, shove again. Uh, to see Logan Gilbert, a well-rested Gilbert, go out there, shove again. Would love to see them go to Kirby next time. I think we could see Kirby put you know, put his dick on the table and say, hey, look, I, I belong in this rotation in the postseason. And then well, I don't know what they're going to do with Robbie Wright. But I'm not going to pretend like I think he's going to shove in, in, in a game against the Astros. But I, I think that's the only way that we can really see Seattle in this conversation is they get three just – dynamite starts from three pitchers who are capable of doing it. I don't think we have to wonder how the bullpen's going to perform. I I'm willing to deliver die by that pen without a doubt. Uh, and I think that pen can match up with the Astros. And what I will say is Logan Gilbert, 25 innings he's thrown against the Astros this year, seven earned runs, give him like a two, four ERA. Against them. But yeah, Verlander play. Verlander has thrown 43 innings against the Mariners this season, two, four, two Jesus. ERA. Yeah. 43 that's, that's like 12 times if Not they 12. if they get a run or two off of verlander i mean that that's that's all you need if that's the bullpen holds up and you get the magical performance like that's what it's going to take but is, logan is gilbert is still a young pitcher on the road in minute made that if we're talking about who's going to sell i know the ticket prices may not reflect it but no, astros but fans are going to be they'll pack it in they're yeah. going to be banging 100 not um, on trash cans though no no <laughs> No. All right. Uh, Yankees, Guardians, Cal Quantrill, Garrett Cole. Um, I, I, I said Guardians like pretty convincingly, but their lack of offense certainly like worries me a little bit. They they won a two game series where they hit what like one seventy or something as a team. Um, with how the Yankees line up rotation wise, oh god, I'm still gonna go with Cleveland in five. This is such a hard series for me, both emotionally, spiritually, physically. I do think the Guardians win game one behind <laughs> Quattro on the road at Yankee yeah. Stadium. But the thing is, you know, Yankee fans have been just like screaming at us through our TikTok because all of us were on the Guardians, basically saying that when Cleveland has come to Yankee Stadium and when the Yankees have played the Guardians in the past, they have dominated them, and that is a fact. When Cleveland comes to New York, we beat them. And I say we, the Yankees beat them. But I think the Yankees, like, they need momentum to build in their lineup. They need DJ to get on and then Judge and then Stan. I mean, they need to be firing on all cylinders. And I think that these division series teams that had this buy, it could come back to bite them. I think the Guardians can bum rush the Yankees with their pitching, with that bullpen, and they're going to make it close. I'm still going to go with the Guardians in five, but it's impossible for me to accurately <laughs> predict this series because I'm hedging happiness. Yeah. This I is, mean, might be the most uh, – they're all competitive. They're all amazing. This is going to be a fun one, though. It really is. I, I think when you look at – the way the guardians are going to win, like potentially win this thing is I think it's just really that Yankees offense stalling out, which we've seen happen plenty of times this year, but we know when the Yankees offense is going right, it, it's, into it, it. it's, it's <laughs> tough. Right. But I, we've seen this Yankees offense stall out. Uh, it, it's happened. And, you know, I, I think we're going to see a postseason series where, you thought Aaron Judge didn't get pitched too much during the home run stretch. He's going to get pitched too even less. Uh, and, and I do think there's points and times where you, you look at the rest of the lineup and I like there, there's some guys I'm, I'm worried about at times. But, I mean, I'm not even blinking when it comes to pitching to John Carlos Stanton instead of, of Aaron Judge or, or whoever it may be in that lineup behind him. Uh, I, I don't think Judge is going to get much to hit this series. And I don't think the Guardians are going to let Aaron Judge beat them. It's not going to be a one-man wrecking crew. That might work in the regular season. Not going to work in the postseason. They will pitch around. Around him. So it happened to the Giants with Barry Bonds, and that's why they struggled a lot in the postseason. They didn't have the guys to kind of protect him and pick him up. I, I do wonder, and I think a lot of this is going to ride on the shoulders of John Carlos Stanton, who has been a postseason beast. He has been great in the postseason when we've seen him. 
I, I really think it's going to be whoever can offer that protection for Aaron Judge. I could see the Guardians executing a game plan. They don't pitch to Judge. They dominate the rest of these guys. And, you know, if they can do that, then they just got to keep it low scoring. You keep it, you know, two to three runs. You, you keep it a low scoring game. All you need is one swing. And we know that the Guardians have found a way to get that swing off. And I, I think Jose Ramirez, talk about momentum. How about an individual building momentum? It has not been Jose Ramirez's best season. That series was phenomenal. He made an impact in almost every single way. That's a guy who can one man wrecking crew this series. And uh, I wonder if the, the Yankees will take a similar approach and say, hey, we're going to let somebody else beat us. So Cleveland in five. Arm, what do you have? I'm going to go Cleveland in five. Peter? Cleveland in five. Jeez. Okay. Uh, Padres, Dodgers. Wait, uh, two important storylines. I know I keep interrupting because there's just more to say. Like a role this Chapman left off the roster. Yeah. That is That huge. was an important thing to mention, actually. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, was, that, I that thought is... about that before we got into it. I was like, this is so funny. I can't wait to talk about this. A role this Chapman didn't show up to a practice. Aaron Boone said, not a good enough excuse. How important Left was the off. practice? You gotta be it's there. Only the, the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, we're not talking about, about the game where I dropped thirty. Yeah, we're talking. <laughs> yeah, about who practice. cares? He, it wasn't game day, bro. Just, just let him be. He was in Miami. He's just. How unlikable John. is Chapman at this point? He's I mean, how many postseason highlights? How many highlights can we go in through of him blowing it? He didn't have a good season this year, and now he just doesn't show up with a bad excuse. Good. Kind of did you guys a favor. Yeah, I was saying, not even mentioning did the Yankees domestic assault. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you know, yeah, sure. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> but the good thing is for the Yankees that Matt Carpenter might be back. Still that would be awesome. Clear. I would love to see Matt Carpenter in this. I uh, like he's had such an awesome year. This guy earned an opportunity. I would love to see Carpenter there. That would be a big, big, big difference for them offensively. I, I, I really think so. But Chapman not being in the fold here, doesn't that make most Yankees fans feel better? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Um. Okay. Padres, Dodgers? Padres, Dodgers. Yeah, Dodgers in four. This is very simple for me. <sighs> Uh, this is not simple for me. I think it's another Dodgers in five. Kind of similar here to Phillies Braves. I think the Padres can give them a run for their money. If Gonsolin is not good, if Tyler Anderson is not good, the Dodgers are in trouble here. Their bullpen is is great, and their offense is going to roll. And I think this is going to be a high, higher-scoring series. Um, but the Dodgers have been dominated by Blake Snell. If we're talking about the Mets getting dominated by Blake Snell, Blake Snell has owned the Dodgers. That might be a win there. You know, it's going to be another great series. I have Dodgers in five, but I am not confident in it. I think a Padres series price might be in my future. I think it's I think it's going to be very, very close. But I will pick the Dodgers here. Not confident, though, Arm. You know what I hate is that Mike Clevenger has the ball game one. Yeah, the, one and all. The, that, that game that puts them so behind that, the I hate that. <laughs> I that's what kills me. I almost wish they said bullpen game and I could just be like, all right, we'll see how it goes. Like Clevenger, I feel like I already know how this, I already know how this one's going. Four innings, uh, three earned. I do agree with Peter loss. though. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I think, I think this is going to be a series. I really do. Um, this is a, this is a galvanized Padres team. Like we talked about in a huge rivalry. Um, it's going to be intense in LA. It's going to be intense in San Diego. It's going to be a lot of fun. You see a cocky Padres team heading into a team that I promise you, if you gave them their pick of the litter of who they would like to bounce from this postseason, it's the LA Dodgers and they're not blinking. Every player on the team is probably saying the same thing and not thinking twice about it. Uh, there's going to be a different level of intensity. They're going to get the Padres best punch. That said, Dodgers are a lot better. They're built to outlast them. And that's where things kind of come in here. I think we're going to get to a decisive game five. The Padres will have already emptied the tank. Like they, they their, their bullpen will be taxed. Yeah. I don't know, you know, what their starter situation will look like at that point. But I think the Padres are going to empty the tank to prolong the series. And I think it goes five. Uh, the big X factor for me is what Juan Soto are they getting? I know yeah. that was a cheap hit the other way, but you kind of saw some relief from him there. Usually he, he has the big hit and he doesn't give you that much emotion. You saw more emotion than usual. Um, I just I sense a different vibe from this Padres team. They seem to be coming together in a lot of ways, uh, kind of just because of despite Fernando Tatis. I think that really was a galvanizing moment for them, as Jack alluded to. 
Um, I think they're going to kind of rally around and, and give the Padres or give the Dodgers, excuse me, a hard time. Where do you stand, Jack? Uh, again, it's still simple for me. I And I think it, in large part, it's because of game one. I think if you go Julio Reyes game one versus sucks. Clevenger, I mean, that is, <laughs> that's probably sucks. the starkest contrast you'll find in the postseason from here on out. I, I, I'm not kidding, level. Peter. What Do you think the money line is like minus 250 in that one? It's going to be minus 200, most likely. For I mean, a it's playoff, playoff game, baseball, that's insane. But honestly, for a playoff Padres, game, that's stupidly pa- insane. Padres are going to have great value on the money line in that game. I'm not going to be on it, but like, you know. I might throw $10 on that. Anytime yeah. I see a money line of in a baseball ball game period i don't care I who the ba- who we is playing this. i don't care who is playing if it's if i'm getting better than two to one odds on a baseball game i throw ten dollars on it like you, and, you have to and uh, um just a couple of stats for you jack just to harp on the starting pitching i mean darvish has a 2-5-2 era against the dodgers this year 25 innings musgrove 363 not as good but snell has dominated them too they can win any of those games so i agree they lose game one but i think a combination of musgrove snell and Darvish wins two games, but the Dodgers end up winning out. My thing is they can put a stop to this momentum in game one. The Dodgers can. Like if it is a murder in game one, that momentum that you carry from the wild card series, if you get fucked up by Julio Arias and you fuck up Mike Clevenger, that that takes a lot of momentum away. And that's my thought on Dodgers in four. So, don't they know that Clevenger stinks, though? Don't they know there are? I hope they that know. Game? Didn't <laughs> I they see the minus two twenty line? Let's say, oh, it's okay. This was this one was and not also, meant to be, anyways. If we're talking about pitchers dominating the opposing offenses, Julio Arias threw twenty four innings against the Padres this season, four earned runs, yeah. one Jesus. five zero ERA, he's three zero. Yep, that's there a tough go. game one. So I think it's I think it's one of those series where Dodgers go up two one. Padres win a decisive game four with their with their butts on the line, and then the Dodgers just winning game five, and it's over. Uh, two very quick things before we wrap. Um, Bob Costas, Ron Darling, Lauren Shahadi on Yankees Guardians for the series, which is great. Uh, Brian Anderson, Jeff Francoeur, Matt Weiner on Mariners Astros have yet to see the Fox assignment. So you've got two great booths. Brian Anderson is awesome in the postseason. Awesome. And uh, Bob Costas is a legend. Obviously, Ron Darling is the best analyst in the postseason, and Lauren oh, yeah. Jahadi is a queen. So, yeah, Lauren Jahadi rocks. I, I want that's, that's actually a sick booth. I want Dave Sin, Sims and Don Orsillo doing every game from now on. That's what I want. <laughs> um, Electricity. Now, I don't care who Fox, the teams are. Fox, you <laughs> will Joe probably Buck. get um, for the NLDS. I bet you get Joe Davis on braves phillies i bet they keep them away from the dodgers um yeah. and then you've got um i would assume maybe adam amin on the other one so uh it really good boots yeah. so it's not going to be an espn thing where you got to deal with michael k no i want more michael k i, I want to hear that <laughs> don't want more michael k. for a team that is not the yankees that definitely oh, feels they good. spent like an inning and a half talking about how beautiful bush stadium is during the wild card game like come on <laughs> you should have seen games. yankee fans like it feels like michael k is cheating on us because <laughs> he's, does. So, he's, he's so yankees like joe davis it, dodgers but like he's not so dumb no, he's an you know? yeah. like yeah exactly so michael k is so yankees he's ingrained in it, the culture there that it's like when he's announcing games it almost feels weird like he could have been spotless perfect and it's still weird but he's like not. even coming from a yankee fan like i thought <laughs> he did great but because i'm biased but i agree well, it's like the it's rest like of the country Who's the guy that plays McLovin? Like whoever that is. Yeah. That guy, I will never take him seriously in any no, other role. He's he will, McLovin. He's John Krasinski. McLovin. John Krasinski from The Office. Yeah, yeah he's like, Jim. He will like, always, he will yeah. always be Jim. I'm watching this guy like shoot people and like fight. I'm like, that's yeah, fucking that's Jim. That's Jim. Just, on, yeah. Dwight Schrute, another guy. Like, yeah. They're, they're just, they're Rain Wilson. Rain yeah. Wilson. Just, they're they're ingrained pigeonholed. in their roles. And that's Michael, Michael K. K is you're the pigeonholed. I'm sorry. You're pigeonholed in the great spot. I will say, a very great spot that we'd all happily be pigeonholed in. But. You're pigeonholed. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And with that, thank you, everybody. <laughs> See ya.